Hi friends, today we will see about diaphragm paralysis and event rash. These conditions are very rare but important diagnostic consideration in patients with persistent hypoxemia especially with hypercarbia in neonatal period. After thoracic surgery when it is difficult to wean from mechanical ventilation and the high spinal cord injury those with uh, uh, diaphragm contour in chest radiography. The clinical presentation in both conditions due to the diaphragmatic dysfunction. So what is diaphragm paralysis? This is a condition with the weakness of diaphragm and have reduced breathing capabilities. This is because of uh, inadequate signal from the phrenic nerve to the part of or the entire diaphragm. Then the diaphragm paralysis can be unilateral or bilateral. In unilateral, it involves one side of the diaphragm which means the diaphragm is partially functioning and the part that is paralyzed it is moving upwards to the chest cavity and taking up the space which means to the lungs and interfering with breathing and the bilateral paralysis it occurs when the entire diaphragm is paralyzed it doesn't move while breathing and requires the mechanical assistance for the breathing next what is diaphragm infiltration? in this condition the diaphragm is positioned in abnormally high position as a result of lack of uh, muscle or nerve function. When the muscle does not contract, which causes its abnormal placement, and it will compress the lung, and of course it will make breathing difficult. Now we will see the key symptoms. In this, we can see uh, dyspnea or respiratory distress usually associated with uh, hypoxemia or hypercarbia, orthopnea, exercise intolerance, ineffective cough, recurrent pneumonia and bronchitis, paradoxical chest and abdominal movement with uh, respiration because of the poor uh, diaphragm and the muscle movements, and decreased air entry to the lungs, uh, recurrent episodes of bronchospasm, cardiac arrhythmias, nausea, vomiting and indigestion can occur in patients with the displacement of the gastric fundus into the elevated diaphragm. So what next? The causes. A difficult vaginal delivery with or without obvious birth trauma in case of newborn. With the best surgical technique, uh, the diaphragm paralysis can occur during cervical, thoracic and cardiac surgeries. And spinal cord injuries and uh, inflammatory or infectious polyneuropathies and brainstem disorders. Then the investigations and diagnosis. A blood gas determination to confirm hypoxemia and hypercarbia. However, the patient may compensate quite well if there is a unilateral paralysis or eventuation. An elevated level of uh, base excess and bicarb can suggest chronic hypoventilation. A pulmonary function test can provide supportive uh, diagnostic assistance. Overnight oximetry to determine uh, nocturnal hypoxemia and radiological studies like uh, chest x-ray, ultrasound, CT scan uh, and uh, nerve conduction studies. Next we will see the complications. The impaired cuff may result retention of lower airway secretions. This can predispose to chronic atelectasis and recurrent bronchopulmonary infections, both of which leads to uh, pulmonary scarring and uh, secondary loss of lung function. Hypoventilation can cause respiratory distress and secondary failure to thrive and exercise intolerance. Then the indigestion and high gastric pressure due to the displacement of the gastric fundus to the elevated diaphragm. Let's see the treatment. The hypoxemia should be corrected with the oxygen supplement under close monitoring. If there is severe distress, we may need to intubate and give mechanical ventilator support. And NGT feeding may be required to give nutritional supplement and pulmonary rehabilitation and physiotherapy. In surgical management, there are two ways, diaphragmatic pacing and diaphragm application. In diaphragmatic pacing, it is a minimally invasive surgical option to place a pacemaker uh, to regulate breathing by giving electrically stimulation to the phrenic nerve. And the diaphragm application, it involves the tying of the affected part of the diaphragm to the uh, part which is functioning normally. 
It will prevent the diaphragm moving upward to the chest cavity and allow the lung to function normally. At last, the prognosis. The long-term prognosis for the unilateral uh, diaphragm paralysis is good without any surgical intervention. But whoever is leading a poor quality of life because of this issue, we may need to proceed for surgical intervention. I hope you enjoy my class. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.